Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAB Marine Mammal Research Association and welcome to lesson 10. All the data that we've used so far is data that we've got from other sources. So over the next couple of lessons we're going to look at creating our own data and we're going to start with point data today. Okay, so far all I've done is I've opened up a new QGIS document and I've used the XYZ tiles in browser to add Google satellite data. If you don't know how to do that, we did it a couple of lessons back, so just flick back through the lessons to find it. So I've double clicked on that to bring it in. And today we're going to be looking at creating point data and what we can do with that point data. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to be creating trees, is we need to create a new layer for our trees. And you'll need to create a new layer for each of your points. So go to layer, add layer, sorry, layer, create layer, and then new shapefile layer. And we'll go into file name. You can see I've already created trees, so I'm just going to call this uh, trees 10 because it's less than 10, and click save. And you'll see in our geometry type it says point. We do want point, so that's great. And we could just add our points now, but what we want to do is add some fields to give us a bit more information than just our coordinates for each tree. So you'll see the ID is already in here. Every point we have in QGIS has to have an ID. So that's already comes up automatically. But what we're going to do is we're going to add diameter. And diameter is going to be a decimal number. And then because we want to be able to add some decimals afterwards, so we can have 1.2 meters rather than just doing it to the nearest meter, for example, I'm going to make it precision two. Then I just click add to fields list and you'll see it pops up in our fields list. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add is species, which will allow us to fill in the species of tree it is. And this is going to be text data. So I just changed to text data. Obviously that doesn't have a precision because you don't need decimals in text. And I'm going to click add to field list. And then I'm just going to click OK. And you'll see that it pops up in our layers. So in order to start editing, we need to toggle editing, and we do that in the digitizing toolbar. The digitizing toolbar is this one just here with the grayed out icons and the yellow pencil. Uh, if you don't have a digitizing toolbar, all you need to do is right click in any gray space and go down to digitizing toolbar. So you can see I've turned it off there and I can just right click again to turn it right back on. Once you've found the digitizing toolbar, just click the yellow pencil for toggle editing and you'll see that it's illuminated a load more options which were grayed out before. So we want the one that says add point feature and once you click add point feature it'll come up with this target and I'm just going to click on top of my first tree which is this one over here and you have to give it an ID as I said so I'm going to give it the ID 001. It's quite a small tree so I'm making up these uh, diameters. Um, let's give it a diameter of one meter. And then for our species, uh, again, I'm making this up, but let's just say it's ash. I'm going to click OK. And then I can go over. This is quite a big tree. And go Again, this is going to be ID, obviously, 002 this time. Uh, it's going to have a large diameter. So let's say it's got a diameter of, I don't know, 11.7 meters. And then the species, this one, again, I'm making this up, but... Is oak and I'm just gonna pause the video why I do a couple more trees because obviously you don't want to sit here for 10 minutes or whatever why it's digitized trees but we will do this for all the trees in the area okay so you can see that I've now digitized all of my trees so we've digitized my point vector data um, so the last thing to do is just to make sure that I've clicked untoggle sorry toggle editing to turn editing off and it'll say do we want to change save changes to the layer of course we do so click save and we can go it now and right click on our trees 10 and go to open attribute table and now you can see we've got all of our IDs there with the diameters and the species okay so I can just double click on ID to get them in the right order um, Perfect. 
but these dots that we have now aren't particularly representative of our trees because they're all the same and we know that we've got different species and different diameters. So if we double click on the little green dot in trees and it will bring up our properties and we want to go on to symbology. And we've used this before but the first thing we can do is just change it to categorized and under value we can add species we're happy with random colors so you can just click classify ah oh sorry it didn't register that I click species so I just do that and click classify and it will show all of our different trees ah so here's a little thing we've got hawthorn twice because I've done it once with a lowercase and once with an uppercase so that's just something to be aware of and then we just click apply and OK and you can see that now we have our different tree types very clearly in so we have our eight trees here and our ash trees like I said I just made those species up but we have all of our trees there um, and they're labeled with their species um, the other thing we can do is if we go into our properties again we can go to labels and we can turn these single labels and then we can add our species as the label click apply and click OK I'm just going to add a text buffer as well to make it easier to read no it didn't apply oh it did there we go never mind so now we can see which species each tree is as well as having the different colors what might be more useful to us is if we could be could view the trees and look at their relative size but just by looking at their icon so if we go to this again and go into properties this time go into symbology and change from categorized to graduated and we're going to do it on the value diameter and where it says method we're going to change from color to size so we've got it says we've got size one meter to eight meter for our diameter which is correct and down here we've got it says equal count or quantile which just means it's going to separate it into eight different classes and I can click classify and you see it's got different symbols for our different trees so we've got the first symbol for trees which are um, 1 to 1.22 meters and then we've got 1.22 to 1.44 etc etc and it's just separated it so that we've got the same amount of trees in each category and I can just click apply and OK and you'll see that we now have our different trees actually it's a bit difficult to see so I'm just going to turn the text off so just go to labeling again and uh, just change from single labels to no labels click apply click OK and you can see that we've got our different size trees shown with different symbols and we can change those numbers around to whatever we want to change the categories but it's just showing you very quickly how we can digitize our point data and make it a bit more representative of what we have on the ground here um, so you can see without the Google satellite data we've got all the positions of our trees and we, we've got our general tree sizes we can go in again to our symbology and we can play around with these categories so we might want trees from 1 to 1.5 meters in this category um, you'll see it automatically updates this one but we obviously need the upper value to be higher so we might want this one to be 1.5 to 2 this one 2 to 3 this one 3 to 5 and the rest can be from um, 5 to 11.7 which is our maximum size so these are the sizes for our icons and you can see that the small the smallest tree was very small so let's just up that to 
to three to make that a bit of a, a nicer size to look at. Okay, and now we can just click apply and okay. And you can see that now our trees are looking a bit more realistic. Turn Google Satellite Data back on and that's looking perfect. We might even wanted to have made our bigger trees a little bigger. Um, so we might have wanted our maximum symbol to be a little bit larger. Uh, but there we go. It's just because we've got such a big category of trees for these. Okay, excellent. That's it for this time. Next time we're going to look at how we can add line data and do similar things with line data. Thanks. Bye.